May Crispy have acquired a surplus of foods, supplies, and comforts by the time we meet him in the afterlife.
Kinek and Shulu. Feel a witching kick. Come see. I might have what you need. Boy! Hi there. See anything that you like? Here you go. Very good. The gods favor us both. Very good. The gods favor us both. Very good. Mm, impossible. I can't carry any more. The gods favor us both. Here you go. Very good. The gods favor us both. Very good. Here you go. Thank you, Ishiki. How do you do? I have all kinds of stuff. That's a good deal for both of us. Come back soon, miss. Did you say someone's missing? Yes, Isabella, another member of the field study. I checked on her after the first tremors this morning, but her tent was empty. You should ask Manu. He probably told her where to find El Dorado. This is serious. We had a fight last night. A bad one. I'm sorry, Guillermo. I didn't realize. Please, continue. You had a fight. I don't mean to pry, but... It's all right. 
We've been very close friends for almost a year, and I think both of us would like there to be more, but neither of us has broached the subject. Isa and Sarah, they often don't get along. Sorry, Sarah, but it's true. Because Sarah insists on her team being very down-to-earth, while Isa has a passion for folkloric tales of hidden temples. I often get caught in the middle. Those stories always come from somewhere. Even if most of it is made up, there'll be some kernel of truth to it. That's Isa's viewpoint, too. Anyway, there's an old blind man who lives here named Manu who's full of these kinds of stories. He convinced her there's a secret crypt hidden around here, and last night she asked me to come with her and find it. I refused, and we got into the old fight. It ended with her calling me a hidebound coward, and me calling her a... a foolish child. So she ran off? Yes. To as she put it, prove all you naysayers wrong. This morning I heard rumors that she vandalized the cemetery last night. That's when I started looking for her. When I found her missing with no one knowing anything, I started to worry. What if she went looking for the crypt and something happened? I can never forgive myself. All right, you stay here. So if there's news or she comes back, you'll know about it. I'll go looking for Isabella, starting with the cemetery. You'd do that? To be honest, I'm as curious about that crypt as she is. You're overreacting. Are you kidding? She wasted enough of my time, Guillermo. I know you're... It's not about it. So there's a crypt around here somewhere? A secret crypt. Why secret? If Lopez is involved, there's bound to be a trick. That's a solid theory. What about you? Did you find anything? I got a pamphlet. Seven steps closer to God. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it'll help. Strange, there are only seven stations. This must be based on an older tradition. Jesus takes up the cross, falls the first time meets his mother. Then Veronica wipes his face before he falls the second time. Then he is crucified and finally entombed. <coughs> Feels like a mausoleum. Mm. Means we're on the right track, right? Jonah, I feel something. We're getting close. Let's look around for signs of Lopez. These notes were written by the founder of the Sector 7. They're talking about funds allocated for renovations to the library. The door closed and a silence settled. So great and so vast, I held my breath for fear of breaking it. Lopez turned to me, his eyes wild. A smile screwed across his face. He came toward me, arms outstretched, and for a moment, fear flickered across my heart. But he pulled me close, his fingers digging into my shoulders. I found it, he whispered in my ear. And releasing me, he wandered through this room. Walls of pure jade reaching up to the heavens, completely covered in intricate etched mosaics and carved figures. I followed at a distance as he approached an altar and watched as he lifted a silver box from it. The others are worried that brothers de la Cruz and Serrano will not return. I have so far maintained they will, that they always have. But in my heart, I am beginning to believe we have seen the last of them, and that grief weighs heavily. We will continue their work. 
Either they will return to find we have not forgotten the teachings, or they will look down on us from above and bless our continued labors. This cross, it looks like it's from the 17th century. Twenty-fifth of December, 1603. It has been four days since we turned away from the city. We traveled in silence and in circles, guided by a confusion of grief, relief, and celebration. Lopez and I exited the jungle and landed in a clearing, under the gaze of several faces carved into the side of the mountain. Lopez had an episode, as he later called it. He threw himself in front of the faces and screamed for forgiveness. The heaviest sin on his heart was abandoning Perez to the strange warriors. They had grown close over the journey. Try as I might, I could not console him. So I built a fire and waited, as he decreed his actions and pleaded for forgiveness from the silent stone faces. Twenty sixth of December, sixteen o three. Lopez woke me, having already prepared a Spartan breakfast. This is where we were meant to be, he said, a cold determination in his voice, so very different from how he acted just the day before. I finished my meal as he spoke of holy retribution, how he had acted in error, but now God had put his hands on his shoulders and shown him the path to walk. We will spread the true word of God from this small mission, he said, pointing to an adobe building just beyond the stone faces. We will prepare the path for the chosen one to follow, for only he who does will be worthy of this box. 